talk about Syrian terrorists fighting for Azerbaijan in Artsakh since day one. We were getting more and more facts each day. Russia, France, Iran spoke about them too. But only one guy with a mustache kept denying this since day one. Well, actually two guys with mustaches, if we count Turkish Erdogan as well. Azerbaijan has no need for military presence of another country. Don't have mercenaries. This is our official uh, statement. And since the outbreak, already more than two weeks passed, not a single country presented us a single evidence of that. And, and moreover, we don't need that. Oh, but you do! Otherwise, how do you explain this captured Syrian terrorist testimony? There were three lines of attack. We were on one of those lines, 200 mercenaries. They were people who would watch over us and send us to the front line. Say if we had to capture a village, they'd make sure we were on the front line and they'd stay behind. So terrorists were forced to go first, while Azerbaijan would stay in the Kushi rear. Of course, had there been any Azerbaijani at all, because there are multiple reports of Turkish special forces, Pakistani special forces. Are there any Azerbaijani at all? Well, anyway, I hope there is a Geneva Convention of some sort banning cruel treatment of terrorist mercenaries. They'd better be. Anyway, you'd ask what motive does a Syrian mercenary have for fighting for Azerbaijan? We find out about this in great detail in the interview of the next captured Syrian terrorist. They were promised $2,000 a month and a bonus. $100 for the head of every kafir. Do not confuse kafir with kefir, a delicious fermented drink. Kafir is basically an infidel. He's a kafir, I'm a kafir, you probably are a kafir. But it's actually kind of cool. Azerbaijan has a bonus program for its employees. Social corporate responsibility. Unless, of course, they get killed in the first line and then you don't have to pay them anything. And judging by the necklace that they put the serial number 2894 on the Syrian, there are plenty of such employees transported from Turkey to Azerbaijan. The employees, the existence of which Aliyev denies. By the way, one of those non-existent employees just died. A commander, in fact. To make things even more awkward for Aliyev and Erdogan, Syrian National Army published an obituary for the guy killed in Azerbaijan. For the commander? Yes. The one that never went to Azerbaijan or Artsakh? Him. I envy the next journalist who gets to ask Aliyev and Erdogan about this. Or the military tribunal in The Hague. To sum up, yes, the terrorists have been in Artsakh all along. Azerbaijan and Turkey put them there. And now we learn about terrorists in Vienna, France and most of Europe. So the time for expressing concerns and condemning is long past. It's time for sanctions and fighting back.